In December of 2013, a young Minecraft player by the name of Nico stumbled across a server called Hypixel. At this point, Minecraft had only been out for 4 years and had only been officially released 2 years prior. After about 4 years of playing, he had gained an interest in making YouTube videos on the server. Growth was relatively slow, Nico was only about 6-7 to seven years old at this point after all, but this was only the beginning of a Hypixel legend, one who would become one of the fastest growing YouTubers, one that would end up becoming a household name amongst Hypixel players and young children alike, conquering various minigames, defeating top players, learning the fastest bridging methods, and abandoning it all for a very controversial turn. This is not Nico. From his earliest public videos, it's clear to see that Nico genuinely enjoyed playing on Hypixel, but not only that, he was also pretty good, especially for his age, both at Minecraft PvP and keeping audiences engaged. You see, as expected, Nico's voice at the time was that of, well, a kid. Hey guys, now Nico here, back at it again with another Minecraft video, and in this video I'm gonna be showcasing a really sick mod. It stood out distinctly from all of the deep-voiced members of the community that were also prevalent at the time. Nico was different from all of them. He would go on to make videos on Hypixel ranks, Optifine capes, rare names, new Hypixel features, educational videos about various minigames, and tutorials. Something was special. Nico knew a thing or two about YouTube. Whether he had stumbled upon it by accident, or if he genuinely knew what he was doing, it worked out. And by the way, if you want to help my YouTube journey work out as well, a sub to the channel would be awesome. Anyways, back to the video. With the success, he was able to get in contact with YouTubers and top players alike, making even more content, and learning more about both YouTube and Minecraft. With that, his channel absolutely skyrocketed, getting the fabled YouTube rank straight from Simon Hypixel himself just one year after he started his channel. However, disaster struck when Nico stopped uploading. Apparently, he had broken his wrists in a skateboarding accident and was unable to upload videos for a while. It didn't take him long to recover, however, as he would be making his return in 2020. At this point, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Minecraft content was at an all-time high, and so was Hypixel. It was the perfect time for Nico to continue grinding content as usual. But at this point, his content would start to change. Instead of PvP, Nico would start learning how to Godbridge. Fabled as one of the fastest bridging methods, Godbridging was an ability that at the time, not many people knew how to do. It took Nico a while to master, but eventually, he did it he was able to confidently godbridge in real Bedwars games even with void pressure. With the genius idea of godbridging in front of streamers and YouTubers, including Wally Bear, who is one of the largest Bedwars YouTubers, and various members of the Dream SMP, which at the time is one of the largest Minecraft content SMPs, this would turn out to be a very smart idea on his end, as not only could he make content out of it, but the streamers would also be advertising Nico as well, whether they noticed it or not. Nico started to grow faster than ever before. Amongst the YouTubers, Nico would go on to meet many important friends, who would be featured in his videos quite a lot. This list of friends includes, but is not limited to, OK Mongo, Meep, Udo, Ohms is Cool, and most importantly, Dead Fear. Around this time, Nico also met a musician at school who would become one of his very close friends, and his name was Corian. Nico convinced Cory to become a Minecraft YouTuber as well. Cory thought that was cool, and the two made content together. But at this point, it was 2021. Hypixel was getting very stale. People started to get bored of Bedwars, which was Nico's main source of content. With this, he decided to switch it up and do the rising Minecraft butt videos, in which he played regular survival Minecraft, but added twists, such as bridging giving him overpowered items to help him beat the game. After this, he would start to make Mr. Beast style videos, in which he would make YouTubers compete for money in various Minecraft challenges. This satisfied both his old audience, as it still gave off the competitive Minecraft combat vibes that they liked so much about his old Hypixel content, but it also brought in a new group of subscribers who had no idea what Hypixel was. Then he moved on to content where he fought the top Minecraft players in their main game modes, and lastly, Nico learned a series of some of the hardest Minecraft skills possible. But after that, Nico stopped uploading. On this channel at least. In fact, so did Deadfear. Their friends were still well and active. More active than ever actually but they were receiving a lot of backlash. They started to make kids content. This was a complete 180 from the content they had already been making, competitive Minecraft videos and such, and thus they had lost respect from many of their fans. It didn't matter though, as the positives far outweighed the negatives for them. They were able to upload far more consistently thanks to the work being dispersed amongst a team of people. An argument could be made that the videos were lazy, but in reality, they now needed more effort to make. Thanks to the outsourcing to multiple people though, Things were undoubtedly less stressful for the creators themselves. 
Not only that, but children tend to not care about fancy editing, intense music, or anything of the sort. Thus, the videos were very minimally edited, and had great view duration. This type of editing would likely not fly with the old viewers, and not to mention, with all the views and watch hours they were receiving, it's no doubt they were making absolute bank. This, however, did not sit well with the old viewers, who mainly felt betrayed at the new content. Nonetheless, they were still very successful, but a decent portion of their comments for a while were from their old fans, wondering when they would make a return to their old content, or being salty about the new content. This was a slight mistake by Cory and Ohms. They had switched up on the people who subscribed to their channels. So why not make new ones? This is exactly what Not Nico and Deadfear did. They had started making kids content on two brand new channels named Nico and Cash. After about a year of daily uploading, Nico made it to 1.5 million subscribers, and Cash made it to 3 million. This made their new channels far bigger than their old ones. They also started introducing a new set of friends, as characters like Shady and Zoe started appearing, which is also something that the other YouTubers have done. So, what's the difference? What made Cash and Nico so different from Cory and Ohms? Well, in reality, not much. The new channels just made it easier to transition over to the new set of viewers. This way, old viewers didn't have to see content they weren't going to watch, ruining their click-through rate and causing a dip in subscribers, as old viewers probably weren't going to watch their new content. Starting fresh allowed them to fully focus on the new subscribers, who would be way more likely to click on their bright, colorful thumbnails and enjoy their new videos. Along with this, their YouTuber friends they previously had respected the Switch, as instead of seeing them grow on their own homepages, they could instead watch from the side as their friends grew more and more successful. Remember when Not Nico came back, you, you could like 8 months, and then like grew up again. But, no, no, I'm talking about like, remember when Not Nico was yeah, like, yeah. A, like a little kid or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then he came back and started garbaging, and it's like- I'm so Have you seen his new channel? It's oh, crazy! Yeah, with, with, uh, yeah, with yeah, dude, dude, with I'm so Cass proud of him. I'm so dude, proud of him. Dude, dude that's just a millionaire, bro! <laughs> Dude, they're doing it together, like, partner. Yeah, I know, but, like, Nico was already making bank on his main channel. Deadfear, like, dude, like, I'm so happy. The videos are so long. Like, obviously, I can't watch his content with a straight face, because I'm not, like, I can watch a kid. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm not... Okay, well, but brother, I respect I, the grind. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the target audience, but I, like, mad respect it, like, genuinely. He cracked me up with Like, his fanbase can hate on him all day long, but, like, who's making more money? Like, that's how the world works. <laughs> Dev, Nico fell off, apparently? No, bro, he's dead. So I say, stop being so toxic towards these creators. They've clearly found something that works for them. Be happy for them instead, as they've been able to find themselves in a situation where they are more successful than ever before. You're not forced to watch their videos, not at all. If it's not for you, then that's okay. These popular YouTubers now don't need to rely on good editing, pacing, and collabs, and don't need to stress about their weeks of work going to waste on poorly performing videos. In a sense, they've revived the old style of content that many of us used to watch not very long ago with names like DanTDM, Stampy, and many more that I'm sure you remember very fondly. If you don't like their new content, congratulate them from the sidelines. That's the story so far. From just a young Hypixel player, he was able to become one of the fastest growing Minecraft YouTubers on the platform. And that was the story of Not Nico.